President Obama wants stalemate. He doesn't want victory. And if you're not going to fight for victory, we should never be involved in a war. We're not talking about war. We're not going to war. The minute that one of those cruise missiles lands in there, we are in the Syrian war. This is an act of war. Little wars start big wars. The American people are not persuaded. Right now, members of Congress who are just getting back still have questions. Will there be attacks against American bases in the Middle East if there's an airstrike? You should expect everything. You should expect everything. Including everything. chemical warfare? That depends if the... Uh, if the rebels or the uh, terrorists in this region or any other group have it, it could happen. We will be able to hold Bashar Assad accountable without uh, engaging in troops on the ground in a very limited, very targeted, very short-term effort, unbelievably small, limited kind of effort. Did you ever see stupidity like we're doing right now? We're going to attack you. It's going to be a light attack. It won't be much. That's really going to scare the heck out of Bashar Assad. What? Folks, this is who liberals are. These guys, they really think huffing and puffing, drawing red lines and flexing their muscles is going to scare Bashar Assad. They have no viable plan for success. This attack is not based on defending U.S. national security. You declare this, this, this overwhelmingly threatening evil. Nerve gas, weapons, chemical weapons, all the, and then you come back, but we're not going to do much to it. We're taking sides with the rebels, many of whom are still associated with Al-Qaeda or other groups that mean to undermine us. The Russians say they're going to push Syria to put chemical weapons under international control. I think we should explore and exhaust uh, all avenues of diplomatic resolution of this. So the question is, can we construct something that allows the international community to have confidence that these terrible weapons will not be used again. These strikes, like the administration's Middle East policy of the last four and a half years, lack coherence and fail to support a long-term strategy. That unbelievably small remark by Secretary of State John Kerry just about set Senator John McCain on fire. He blasted out a tweet calling Secretary Kerry's statement unbelievably unhelpful. Here's former Congressman Alan West. Nice to see you, sir. Always a pleasure to be with you. All right, your thoughts. Um, we've got John Kerry, yeah. Secretary Kerry, rather, saying on one hand, unbelievably small, and Senator McCain thinking that's unbelievably not helpful. I don't know it's just sort of an yeah. off-the-cuff remark, but everything Senator or Secretary Kerry says uh, is looked at worldwide Absolutely. under a microscope. Well, what you have to understand, you know, I was an artillery officer, and we always looked at what we call effects-based targeting. And so when you're telling me as a planner, as an artillery officer, you want something that's limited, you want something that's proportional, it's going to be short, not in long duration, it's going to be unbelievably small, that doesn't help me in planning any type of strike and any type of operation. And what we have to understand is... It sounds is, like a cap gun to me, by the way. Well, a little it does. bit. I mean, if it's unbelievably small, I'm not so worried if I'm on the receiving end. Yeah. Unbelievably be small, I think that, okay, well, I just got to get into a bunker. You yeah, telegraph. I have to get into a bunker. Absolutely. And, and so when you talk about degrading his capability uh, to deliver chemical weapons, what you're talking about then is taking away artillery systems that deliver chemical weapons, artillery tubes, multiple launch, launch systems, uh, rocket systems, missile systems. Those are mobile systems. And all of this talking, those things have already been, you know, dispersed. They've probably been put in the neighborhoods where the, uh, the risk of high collateral damage is going to be happening. So Tomahawk cruise missiles really can't go after these mobile type of targets. Now, the only way that you can go after a mobile type of target is if you have someone that's on the ground lazing and tracking that target so you can bring a precision guided munition on it. You can attack a chemical weapon stockpile, and uh, probably most of that stuff has been dispersed as well. And now, you have to look at this. Is it possible that the rebels could have used some of these chemical weapons, turned them into and improvised explosive devices? That's a possibility as well. You know, folks are talking about bombing and cratering airfields and and the uh, the shelters and things of that nature. Then you're going to tip the balance. If he can't use his air force, then the rebel forces, which are mostly aligned to Al Qaeda, they're going to get an upper hand. So it's such a convoluted strategy that no one can really understand. Well, I think that when Secretary of State John Kerry made that statement, I think that he he's, he's trying to convince the American people and members of Congress that this is something that is smart international interest and the right thing to do. I think he forgets um, that, at least we assume, that Syria is listening as well. 
Yes. You know, he forgets that you know that in, in, his, is in, in his yeah in his eagerness to sort of you know persuade the American people of, of the president's um, with the president's plan that I think that he forgets that, and I think that's why Senator John uh, McCain was so upset about. Well, it. let's look at let's look at a you know Israel and how they contended with it. Think about when they went in against Saddam Hussein and his uh, nuclear weapon systems capability. They've been in Syria before. They've gone and they struck a, a supply train for Hezbollah. They don't announce it. They use their intelligence, they track it, they hit it, and guess what? No one says a thing. And that's the way that you have would, to do it. Would you it. have been in favor of this had this been the, 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 the chemical weapons were, were set off apparently on August 21st? Mm -hmm. If on August 22nd, unannounced, which means the president didn't go to Congress, didn't get any consultation, but unannounced that he just went, uh, you know, gave the order and we went over and did essentially what we're going to do now if we attack. That would have shown a decisive action to say that. You know, we already have the resources in place and we have launched an attack because we don't believe that it is in the good interests of international stability and also humanitarian, uh, you know, beliefs that we should have chemical weapons launched. And this is the action that I took. End of story. And I think that people will understand that. But when you sit back and you have this uh, decision making by committee, I can do it, but yet I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to Congress and get approval. That, that does not show decisive action. Now, well, look at what happened in Libya. You know, this is my concern the unintended consequences. We went into Libya, we didn't have congressional approval, and look what happened in well, the Well, I, I, I know there's some objection of, what, of the president going to Congress. I actually think it was the right thing to do, the constitutional thing. I think it's sort of interesting, though, Secretary Kerry says that it's not war. I do consider this war. Well, it when is you, war. When you lob missiles at somebody, because if I got missiles lobbed at me, I would think that was war. It's an act of war. It's, it's an act that brings about, you know, if you take that action, you have to expect, as you saw Bashar al-Assad say to Charlie Rose, there will be a reaction. Now, are you prepared for the counteraction to that? And that's the kind of decision synchronization measures that the, uh, the administration should be going through, and that's what the American people are looking for. But when you look at Libya and the fact that we went in there, we toppled, you know, Gaddafi, but now we have radical Islamists all over the place. We lost an ambassador. We had an attack on an embassy. And now terrorists are being trained there to go fight in Syria. All right, we don't have a minute left. Um, uh, President Putin, your thoughts about President Putin sort of stepping in and uh, mm -hmm. taking a remark by Secretary Kerry and what seemed like a little bit of an aside and now that may be a way to uh, wrestle away those uh, well, weapons from Assad. The, the KGB guy now looks like the only adult in the, uh, in the classroom and really if you want to take away the ability to use those chemical weapons again you have to secure the chemical weapon stockpiles. If Russia wants to continue to have a warm water seaport in the Mediterranean, then it is their problem to, to solve. I don't think Putin wants to see Syria fall into the hand of radical Islamists, and I don't think he wants to see us can become engaged there either. So it's good news that Putin's stepping in. It's a good news, but the thing is, it makes us look very, uh, very bad because he has stepped up. Assuming that he can carry it out. Uh, I think that he will if he really does want to, but I think first and foremost he's going to embarrass our president. Congressman, thank you, sir. Thanks so much for having me.